Hello, all you wonderful people. Good evening. Good evening. Glad to have you guys here. Good evening. Trust everybody is doing good. Welcome to Cat Ninjas. Welcome to Cat Ninjas. Let us have another rocking evening. Uh, before we get started, why don't you confirm that the audio is good, the video is good. Quickly, some of you, if you could confirm, that would be good. So we will be good to start. The audio video is good. Welcome. Welcome to Cat Ninjas. Welcome. Thanks, Prashant. Thanks for confirming. Hello, Anurag. I think the voice is reaching out to you. Hello, Amit. Hi, Tamanna. Good evening. Good evening. I hope all of you guys had dinner. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Good evening. All good. How about your dinner? You guys generally take your dinner and sit or... Uh, you have dinner post, I mean, late dinners, early dinners, I don't know. So can we quickly say that you may be about five, six of you, why don't you type it? Dinner is done or dinner is yet to have. I'm sure Alit during, during, hi Sartak, hello, hello, yeah. I'm sure Alit at least during the lecture you will not have your dinner. So is it before or after? How is it like? So dinner is before the lecture or dinner is after the lecture? How does this generally work? May I quickly know that? Just to understand, just to understand how, how do you manage it. I do it before. I do it before. If you have the same question to me, thinking that what about me? I take dinner before. I take dinner before maybe a cup of coffee or tea before the lecture. Not just before the lecture, maybe sometime before the lecture. That's how it works for me. Uh, how does this work for you? So Anurag is saying it's done. Keval also done. Tamana is done. Sartak also done. Okay, you are also following more or less similar structure. So we all do it. That's good. That's good. Two late dinners are not actually welcome. Little before is always better. But in case right, you take a heavy dinner and you feel a little bit of dosed, so have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, that should keep you awake. If I am not able to keep you awake, right? Sometimes the speaker also can keep you awake. Sometimes the speaker may fail to keep you awake, but you force yourself to keep you awake then coffee or tea could be a good idea, right? You figure it out, you figure it out, you are wise enough to figure that out. Well, all right, so here we start. I think yesterday we were doing on the special platform. Uh, yeah. Oh, is it cable? Huh, okay, but then you are staying awake because of the lecture, you mean to say? You usually go to bed by now, but then you stay awake because of the lecture. Yeah, if you ask me, the golden time to sleep is 11 to 4. I mean, if you ask, call it science, what science says is 11 p.m. to 4 p.m. is the 4 a.m. is the best time to rest. If you ask, call it between how our biological clock is made. Best. It, it, the best need not be best for everyone. In majority, just in case, if you ask me what is the best time to rest, it is this around this period. Around this period. Between this period, you should be sleeping as much as you could for a quick recovery of the body. But yeah, some bodies are different. It works a little differently for others. Fair enough, but this is what the science is from the vast majority perspective. That's it. That's the science. Sleep cycle. That's all it during that time. Majority of us should sleep, kind of. Right? Yeah. Fair enough. All right. So here we go. Let's get started. So be before we start, let me quickly do a brief introduction about myself. So I'm Belvi Srinivas. If anybody is new here on this channel, so it, it would help them. Uh, yes, I worked in various capacities with various organizations in the test prep industry since 2007. That's about 14 years now. And over a period of time during those 14 years, I developed expertise to deal student, train students in the domains of QA, DI, and LR. Uh, I can fairly guide students on verbal, but training is a little different from knowing. I know, fairly I know it, but then training can be a little different. And hence I don't uh, train, but definitely I could, if, uh, if you want the suggestions to improve, that, that, that I could always, that I, that, that I could always help you with how one can prepare on the verbal as well. Right, fair enough. That's briefly about me. And uh, if you want to reach out to me and speak to me, probably this could be the Telegram ID. Looks pretty cumbersome, but you can use this and using this. Uh, and you can tag me there. You can tag me there or you can do a DM so that all right, I will get in touch with you. We can reach out. Uh, that's briefly about the background and how I can be reached. And quick announcements before we start with our lecture. An academy offers two types of subscriptions, which most of you would know. One is the plus subscription for the structured courses and timely tests, so how you need to plan them out. 
right iconic subscription comes out with more personalized guidance it could be in terms of uh, uh, tests or it could be in terms of planning it could be in terms of uh, guidance all of it in the person one to one interactions but that's what the plus subs iconic subscription comes out with plus subscription you have 6 months offer 12 months offer 24 months offer even 3 months offer i guess right you can just take a look but any of this so you can use the code will be 100 and you will get a 10 percent discount although name says will be 100 doesn't give you 100 percent discount yes already you can avail up to 10 percent discount iconic subscription subscription comes with a bit of a premium because the costs there is a lot of one to one involved and hence it comes with that premium i see fair enough let me come to the basics of the variations so all of you understand that variation some people uh, interchangeably use this as proportion as well some people call it as direct variation some people call it as direct variation two things vary directly or the direct proportion these two things vary directly right vary directly or some some schools might have also used the word direct proportion as well doesn't matter when I meant by variation, be it direct proportion or direct variation, I kind of meant the same. So now you guys tell me all right now. Similarly, you also would have used the word inverse variation. You also could have used the word inverse variation. I am not explaining what is inverse variation, direct variation. If you want, all right, you tell me this. I'll give a quick quiz. If it is direct, you can write it as direct. If you think inverse variation, you can write it as inverse. I will write some numbers. There is a A and B. I am writing a relationship between A and B. So on A, if I have these numbers, I made three observations. First observation, second observation, third observation. So when A was 123 or 123, all right, then the B was 876. When A changed to 287, the B changed to uh, 1384. So when three has one, three is four, it's 536. Now this has changed to 3242. Now these are the corresponding output. When the input is 123, output is this. When the input is 287, the output is this. When the input is 536, the output is this. Now the point is A and B, are they directly proportional or are they varying directly or are they varying inversely? What's your choice here? So if it is direct, you think that A and B are varying directly, put it as this, that is direct proportion. If A is directly proportional to B, okay, let's use the word proportion. If A is directly proportional to B, put it as D. If A is inversely proportional to B, put it as I. Is this directly proportional? If A and B, the list, all right, I gave three observations here. If you think that A and B are directly proportional, type D. If A and B are inversely proportional, type I. I is also enough. Direct, if you want to write the full word, write it. No, I just want to type a D, you can type D. You can to type an I, you can type I. Go ahead, go ahead, quick, quick, quick. Just to understand this. Are they directly proportional or inversely proportional? Okay, Sartak says direct, Kaval says direct. Sartak, you are saying two times direct, one time is enough, okay? Yeah, Mohit says direct. Okay, hi, hi, Athena, hi, hi. Hello. Yeah, is it direct or inverse? Is it direct or is it inverse? Only three of you have some understanding, is it? Okay, Anurag says direct. Tamanna says it is direct. Very good, very good, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Let, let me give another list. Now you have to type the numbers in the screen. You have to type it because there is a point to teach here. I'm not happy. I'm not happy with some of your answers. Yeah, so let me put it like this. Let me say A and B, A is set of pencils. A is pencils. Listen very carefully. Pencils. And B, all right, yeah, B is nothing but, let's say B is price. Price. Amount. Let me put it all because both P and P may get cancelled. Amount to be paid or the amount, amount to be paid. All right. So that is my list B. Let me put it to perspective. A, it is said that if you buy a set of 20 pencils, you have to pay 50 rupees. If you buy a set of 20 pencils, you have to pay 50 rupees. That is the offer. That is the offer. Okay. That is the offer. Pencils. A is pencils. Number of pencils. B is amount to be paid. Offer says that if you buy a set of 20 pencils, you have to pay 50 rupees. Question. All right. Now here. Okay. What if you buy 40? What if you buy 40 pencils? Can you tell me what is the amount you are going to pay? What if you <coughs> buy 40 pencils? How much you should pay? Quick, quick, quick. Quick. Put it in the chat. I wanted to put it in the chat. 
set of 20 pencils cost 50 rupees what is the pro what how much would you pay for 40 pencils that you brought yeah, yeah direct direct all right no yeah so it's set of 20 you have to buy two sets of 20 right so you will end up paying 100 rupees very good very good that's what it is all right that is what it is assume that 20 pencils cost 50 rupees so that's how you said you asked inquired about the pencil 20 pencils cost 50 rupees you said that oh give me 40 how much he will charge he will charge you this all right so let me put the other way around let me write that a and b little on the top so what if you wanted only 10 pencils 20 pencils 50 rupees you wanted only 10 how much you are willing to pay set of 10 so 20 costs 50 10 how much how much you pay for 10 how much do you pay for 10 if 20 costs 50 how much do you pay for 10 why cable you will pay only 10 rupees for 10 how much would you pay for 10 based on the given premise perfect guys perfect so perfect your understanding is clear now this is what is directly proportional so okay let's understand what do you mean by proportional the scaling has to be same now listen you wrote something like this all right a is directly proportional to b you technically wrote something like this in the school after that you said that a is equal to some constant times of b when you want to get rid of that proportion yeah, yeah i'm actually going back to class 7 this is actually class 7 or class 8 class 7 i guess proportion class 7 or class 8 different based on the boats i actually went back to that school now yeah okay a is equal to k by b from here you also say that a by b is equal to constant in other words you can also say that ratio is constant a by b is nothing but ratio is constant I think all the teachers would have asked you to remember this whenever they said direct proportion sure they start their teaching here a is directly proportional to b but they end by saying that hey language what you got to remember is ratio is constant that is what the check to and understand that they are varying directly or they are directly proportional let's take a look here is that true here let's take what is a by b here 10 divided by 25 which is nothing but 2 by 5 okay what is this here 20 second line 20 divided by 50 20 divided by 50 which is 2 by 5 it's constant right 40 divided by 100 next one 40 divided by 100 which is 2 by 5 this is what you mean by they are directly proportional or directly varying but this is not true here this is not true here 123 divided by 876 is this also equal to 287 divided by 1384 no is this also equal to next one 536 divided no therefore they were neither directly proportional nor inversely proportional are you getting this are you getting this the check is clear to you yeah yeah i had no intention of discussing this point today but then based on my puzzle that i asked you didn't do that therefore i had to tell you this right yeah otherwise i don't tell all this any which way some things will help some things would help definitely bring some clarity from high school yeah is this clear so earlier list was neither directly proportional nor inversely proportional this list what we generated we generated all right we generated i made you generate and you logically generated it this is directly proportional the earlier one was not earlier one was not hey what can be the earlier one there can be some complex relationship there earlier one we call it as direct relation if you want to give a name to this hey there will be some relationship between numbers which means deliberately i can connect some dots here yeah you can connect there may be very complex algorithm by which you connect but then if a is increasing b is also increasing that is called as a direct relation that is not called as a direct variation or direct proportion okay i hope it's making some sense everyone everyone making some sense is this clear making some sense there is this clear there okay okay right yeah yeah right right okay okay similarly similarly inverse i will just tell you that a and b are inversely proportional thanks thanks mr athena thank you yeah a is inversely proportional to b if it is given that a is inversely proportional to b technically a is equal to k times of b in other words a into b is equal to constant okay you all of you watched already my time speed distance one we already used it several times this inverse proportion we clearly used it so in this case if you want to tell a a is a was speed and this was time b was time speed one time were inversely proportional so when you put that all right now so s all right s is equal to 
k divided by t that is what you wrote there then s into t is equal to k but we already know that this t can k can be called as a distance in this case the k can be called as a distance i will not take so much time to explain this not required because we kind of followed those who did the journey with me so classic example time speed distance could be a very classic example on this so that is what it means to us okay that is what inversely proportional or inverse variation that we kind of study in the schools all right let's with this with this understanding let us jump start into the application anybody has any doubt or want to ask something here let me know so anything that you want to clarify here let me know i will clarify this otherwise i'll think that okay now direct proportion and inverse proportion are clear to us let me think that these two are clear at least the words direct proportion and inverse proportion are clear to us at least these two words are clear or anybody wants to ask something here let me know i will tell that otherwise we are good to go further application five things joint variation also i will tell you. yeah Cable well, linear relation can be any of this, right? A is equal to k times of b plus c can also be a linear relation. Got it, cable? Well, this can also be a linear relation, but this is direct proportion. A is equal to k times of b. All right, this is called as direct proportion. This is called as direct relation because the variable involved are in v real, like linear. They are linear. It's also called as linear relation. Both are same. Both are same. Clear, cable? Well, clear what if it is quadratic then it's a quadratic relation what if i make this b square it becomes a quadratic relation right hmm? yeah those are the terms that we learned right hmm. good very good fair enough fair enough now let's start with the cat question today because it's a very simple topic very simple topic straight jump start with the cat question itself just because the cat also asks easy questions right it also asks medium level difficulty question it also asks difficult questions so let us start with some of the easy questions first four or five we will keep it easy and using the cat question itself let us learn all right that could be a nice way to learn just go travel with me let's do this the cost of diamond varies directly as the square of its weights yeah the cost of diamond varies directly as the square of its weight once this diamond broke into four pieces with weights in the ratio one is to two is to three is to four uh, once it broke all right it fell down and it broke into four pieces these are the weight ratio when the pieces are sold the merchant got seventy thousand less which means he made a loss of seventy thousand rupees find the original price of the diamond pretty straightforward one what he says here it varies directly cost varies directly with the square of the weight first statement gives the complete relationship there do couple of questions with me very very simple here i will tell five things i said that i will tell five things here let me finish those five things then we will go to the application side of it okay what is the first thing i'm trying to tell you here it's a direct variation right so direct all right directly varies that's its cost varies directly with this weight of the square all right square of the weight which is nothing but cost is equal to k times of w square all right k times of w square something like this that is what the first statement is said once you understand this it says that the diamond broke into four pieces now just add them there is always a total ratios chapter we did yesterday so in that we were talking about this as day we were talking about how the word equal in ratios is so very important that's what we did on the special class yesterday so let's say all right now so how, how do i do this one two three four i will say that 10 grams let the weight be 10 grams if the weight is 10 grams once it broke into four pieces it will become one gram here and two grams here one two three four right these are the four pieces let me call this as the first piece this is the second piece this is the third piece this is the fourth piece okay, therefore what is the cost of first piece i'm writing the first piece cost of first piece that is c1 i will write cost of first piece is nothing but one square times of k that is one k that is the cost it would fetch okay, what is the cost of the second piece two square times of k because w square right two square times of k which becomes 4k what is the cost of the third piece three square times of k which becomes 9k what is the cost of fourth piece because there is a fourth piece here it will become four square times of k which would become 16k therefore what is the total so if i sell all these four pieces what do i end up getting now so i end up getting 30k okay what if i would have sold the big piece as it is which means had it not broken had i sold the entire big piece as it is so i would have got how much i would have got which means c cost is equal to c is equal to 10 square times of k that is 100k i would have got 100k 
instead of getting 100k i went on to get only 30k therefore how much loss did i make the gap between these two is the loss i was supposed to get 100k i was supposed to get 100k all right this is what i was supposed to get how much did i get i got only 30k so therefore how much loss did i make the loss is nothing but 70k what did author try to say 70k corresponds to 70000 70k corresponds to 70000 should i find k here you can find as well or you don't have to find also because he is asking that find the original price therefore 100k is equal to how much that is the question 70k corresponds to 70000 then 100k corresponds to 100000 100000 is nothing but 1 lakh pretty straightforward direct cat question direct cat question so no big deal about it you can go with the total 1 2 3 4 was given take them up add them up and say that the total was 10 from there you just proceed with this particular question anybody any doubt on this anybody got any doubt on this very simple cat question i i, I felt anybody any doubt here did anybody get any doubt any doubt anyone any doubt all good all good is everything good no doubt no doubt okay pretty simple straightforward i felt i started off with a cat question because it's a simple one to illustrate so what did i illustrate now type one all right what did i illustrate now questions of the type one what is the type one direct variation two things vary directly this is the direct variation right direct variation amit c is equal to 100 how c is equal to 100 if the total is let's look at this i added these parts one two three four you add you add one two three four which becomes 10 so 10 then what is c here w square what is w square 10 square 10 square is equal to 100 100k 100k right i did i have to assume smart assumption based on what based on the given weights don't take something else and do it one two three four you add because in the ratios always there is something tacit called as total the hidden thing is the total hidden thing total is what one plus two plus three plus four ten and then proceed then proceed that is called as the smart way of looking at the problem right no i will not do this smart way fair enough then all right how you would have done this this is how people would have done it all right now they would say that the first piece is 1x okay if you don't want to do smartly what would have happened here 1x 2x 3x and you will say that the fourth piece is 4x total will become 10x therefore what is the first piece 1k x square because you said 1x in place of w you are supposed to write 1x there 1k x square 4k x square x square x square and x square this is what you will write 30k x square will be the value here it would have become 30k x square now 10x in place of w you write 10x 10x is nothing but 100k x square okay therefore you are now trying to say that what is the value of 100k x square instead of this you would be writing x square and x square your answers will remain same simple so what did that x square did nothing you simply went on to write everywhere x square other than that it didn't do any difference there right it didn't do any difference there fair enough this is type 1 type 1 is direct variation right type 1 is direct variation let's come to the second one what is this inverse variation let's let's read this question let's read this question read it to yourself quickly take 10 15 seconds and read it to yourself okay mr athena you are asking the calculation speed we will speak about it at a later stage we will speak about it yeah how to do calculations faster so we will think about that five types let's quickly do five types and then we'll go to the applications from cat okay yeah there is a hurling machine here right there is a hurling machine here the distance to which a hurling machine throws an object is inversely proportional to the square root of the weight of the object now he is saying that the distance distance covered is inversely proportional to inversely proportional to square root of the weight of the object square root this is what author tried to say nothing but d is equal to therefore you say that hey d is equal to k divided by under root of w this is what he is trying to tell us this is what he is trying to tell us perfect fair enough the person had a stone or that there is a person who had a stone so he broke the stone in the ratio 16 is to 9 so therefore add 16 and 9 call it as 25 assume that the weight of the stone was 25 whatever 25 some weights pounds or whatever it was there was a machine this machine you put it you the input as a something weight there it hurls it throws it it throws certain distance that is what he is trying to tell us say it is 25 
So 25, why, how did I get this 25? Added broken pieces because we broke it. So before breakage, how, what was the weight? 25. 25 after breaking, there is first piece. The weight of the first piece is 16. The weight of the second piece has become 9. Okay. Therefore, the distance traveled by the first piece, D1. Distance traveled by the first piece is K divided by under root of 16. Under root of 16 is 4. That is the distance traveled by the first piece. All right. Okay. What is the distance traveled by the second piece? Distance traveled by the second piece is K divided by under root of 9. This 9 has to go under root, right? Okay. K divided by under root of 9. So, which would become 3. Therefore, it now becomes K by 3. What did author say? Therefore, the total distance traveled by the sum, sum is the total, sum of the distances thrown by the hurling machine is 70 meters together. What is 70 meters? Author is trying to say D1 plus D2 is equal to 70 meters. What is D1? K by 4. What is D2? K by 3. What is this equal to 70? Therefore, you say that 7K by 12 is also equal to 70. That's what you are trying to say. 7 1 times, 7 10 times, therefore k is equal to 120, all right. We got the value of k now. The value of k is nothing but 120. But the question is, had he, had he given this entire stone as the input? What if he had given the entire stone as the input? Then we know that d is equal to the k. What is the value of k? All right, d is equal to k divided, k divided by under root of w, fair enough. What is k? 120. Under root of what? Under root of 25. Why? Because the total weight is nothing but 25. Root 25 is nothing but 5. Therefore, 120 divided by 5, all right, which would be nothing but 24 meters which would be nothing but whatever, 24 meters, because it is throwing in terms of units, which will be equal to 24 meters. Simple one, pretty simple one, straightforward. You just have to understand that the word inverse comes. Something like this would be there. This is type 2. Type 2 is what? Inverse relation. All right, inverse variation. Inverse variation. Type 1, direct. Type 2, inverse. These are the questions that we are talking about. All right, this is the type 2. Anybody, any question here at this stage? Anyone lost comprehension somewhere? Everything clear here? You got the comprehension clear? Pretty simple, straightforward one. Yeah, K, well, there is no hard and fast rule to find the K. Depends. Depends on the question. Sometimes we may have to find K. Sometimes we don't have to find K. Depends. Depends on the question. We can do it without finding K. Based on the question stem, so there is no hard and fast rule. We should, should we really focus on finding K? Should that be the objective? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. That's not the objective. You have to you have to follow the storyline. In the storyline, sometimes you may have to find K. Sometimes you don't have to find K. Depends. Just like if you look at the previous question, it wasn't important. Right? It wasn't important. But can I still find the value of K? You might have still found the value of K. All right, can I can I neglect it because it is not required? Neglect it. Right? Depends. Depends on the question step. All right, depends on the kind of the problem. Okay. Now this is the joint or compound variation. Joint variation, compound variation. See what happened in the uh, what happened in the direct variation. Only two things were involved. A and B were involved. A is directly proportional to B. Maybe square of B, square root of B. All of this. This is what we call it as a direct variation. What is the joint variation? What is the inverse variation? We wrote something like this. We wrote something like this. Okay, what is the joint variation? Joint variation means there will be more than two components. A, B, C. It can be D also. You may say that, sir, what if there is a D? That also will be there, right? So there may be many. That is called as the joint variation. More than two would be there. That is called as a joint variation. Let's take a look at the let's take a look at this question. The pressure of gas varies directly with the temperature. The pressure, call it pressure varies directly with the temperature when the volume is constant. And inversely, what, what varies inversely? Pressure varies inversely. All right, pressure varies inversely with the volume when the temperature is constant. If I stop reading here till here. Right, from here till here. What is what is the keyword pressure? So pressure varies directly here, directly with what temperature? Pressure varies directly with temperature. Fair enough. All right, no, fair, fair enough. Pressure varies directly with the temperature when when the volume is constant. When the volume is the constant. Okay. Similarly, pressure varies inversely with what? All right, inversely. Let right here the word inversely. Inversely with what volume? Inversely with the volume like this. Inversely with the volume when when the temperature is constant. Fair. Enough. Let me tell you analogy. If you just want to quickly understand this from the perspective of what we know very well, I can say something like this: Speed varies inversely with the time okay speed varies directly directly when the time is constant speed varies inversely with time when the distance is constant so how do i put it together use this common thread therefore yes is also equal to d divided by t yes is also equal to d divided by t if you don't understand this right k here no problem 
because already he said that temperature is constant distance is uh, sorry so here i already mentioned that time is constant distance is constant it should be clear just in case it is not clear write it like this all right this is how yes is the common thread use the yes as the common thread this is what the formula we are i i am not sure not sure about the constant put k there no worries k automatically becomes one at some stage but when he said that when temperature constant distance constant when, when the when the time constant distance constant the k value is actually technically equal to one so that is what you mean by the compounding so therefore how do i compound pressure is constant here therefore p is equal to t divided by v this is called as joint variation or compound variation is this clear my friends because a lot of people sometimes they get confused with the joint variation or the compound variation which is very common in cat is this clear joint or compound variation is clear my explanation of joint and compound variation is clear i connected with an analogy which we understand it well clear did it make sense did it make sense quick quick somebody acknowledge quickly acknowledge will be good to go good to go nikul joint variation means there will be more than two things see what did we learn all right now what was the first one direct variation means a is directly varying with b inverse variation means a varies inversely with b this is direct variation this is inverse variation now i am talking about joint variation or compound variation whichever way your high school teachers have taught you so if we want to have a joint variation i will have something like this a varies directly with b again i will take some common element a can be common b can be common c can be common whatever it is a varies inversely with c a varies inversely with c now i have to put them together because it is the same a he is the same fellow he is the same fellow having two relationship right so i am a husband of someone and i am a father of somebody else also that's a joint right that is the compound that's a compound i am talking about i am the same person a i am a husband of someone at the same time i am a father of someone as well right so therefore that's a joint joint means what having multiple roles to play how do you put this entire family together so take a common and join them therefore a is proportional to b by c so now we introduce a introduce a constant a is equal to k divided by b by c a is equal to k divided by b by c something like this nikul clear now clear nikul i give one life life example also clear joint means compound means more than two things are involved that's it that's a simple word simply put that's all it is okay yeah i think it should have helped you this explanation should have helped you nevertheless all right now this is the eighth standard syllabus what i said joint variation eighth or ninth based on the boards that you study okay so let's come back to this therefore let's come back to this this is what we got pressure is equal to temperature by volume if you want to write a k i don't know about k you want to write a k there you can introduce a k there it doesn't harm me it doesn't harm me so if you didn't understand this proposition completely saying that when the wall uh, when, when volume is constant something like this if you didn't understand it don't worry i'll let now put it directly something like p is equal to k times of t divided by v you want to write it now look a little nicer here you can write it like this pv is equal to k times of t pv is equal to k times of t in other words you can also write it as p1 v1 is equal to k times of t1 you can also write p2 v2 is equal to k times of t2 like this you can write many equation for some value of p1 there is a value of p1 but p1 there will be a corresponding value of t1 so that this k remains constant throughout therefore put the values there you will get the answers directly the pressure 35 case 1 pressure 35 temperature 200 i am writing under this i am taking this shape p v is equal to k times of t temperature 200 kevin and the volume is how much 10 10 volume is nothing but k k as it is this is 200 that is the first statement like coming to the second statement the pressure find the pressure pressure is x when the temperature is 240 you are writing this as 240 volume how much volume is equal to 40 k as it is now you have two equations whenever you have two equations either you can add subtract divide multiply you can do whatever you want to do division adds value to me therefore i will divide this side by this side i will divide the first equation by the second equation then i would get the value of x directly from here right so this is five times 45 times 46 times right and then you would say that this is five one time this is five two times two seven times and seven five times all right therefore you say that x is equal to six into five which is nothing but 30 
x is nothing but 30 the pressure is whatever the units there 30 pascals is the pressure we are talking about fair enough did it make sense to all of you did it make sense are we on the right track made sense here made sense is this clear <coughs> Sorry, this is 2, right? This is 2. Therefore, this is, yeah, this is 7. This is 7. Yep, good. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. That is the answer there. That is the answer there. Yeah. Can we equate both equations? You can equate. K, well, you can equate all are same. Equate means what? You equate it to K because K is the constant. You equate both the equations to what? 2k because k is the constant you can equate. Solving, don't worry. Once you have two equations, all of you would be very clear what to do, right? That should not be a problem, right? That should not be a problem, I guess. When you say equate, you are saying that equate it to k. Methods vary. Effort remains the same. Yeah. Okay. Now let us come to inverse relation. Now let us come to inverse relation. Inverse relation, when we use the word, look at this. Direct direct let's say that direct proportion first let me explain direct proportion between a and b direct proportion between a and b direct proportion okay let me write it here direct proportion between a and b listen very carefully listen very carefully if you identify this some of the critical questions at a later stage will become very easy direct proportion between a and b can be written as a is directly proportional to b you write something like this a is directly proportional to b which implies that a is equal to k times of b that is the structure okay so now what is direct relation between a and b what is the direct relationship between a and b it looks something like this direct relationship between a and b is a is equal to k times of b plus another constant called as m k and m are the constant when you write like this this is called as the direct relation from your high school you might remember that direct proportion means this a is equal to k times of this direct relation means this technically this is the direct relation that is when we kind of use the word direct relation all right yeah so similarly inverse proportion when you use the word inverse proportion between a and b you end up writing a is inversely proportional to b in other words a is equal to k divided by b this is what is inverse proportion okay what is inverse relation between a and b therefore inverse relation will look like a is equal to k times of b plus m the m can be positive m can be negative whatever it is this is called as the inverse relation this shape is called as the inverse relation if you if you are good with that which means from the high school concepts if you are good at that you can solve them pretty faster and pretty better right so let's come to this let's come to this let's understand this where it is inverse relation let's read the question total expenses of running a hostel are partly fixed and partly varying linearly again how it is varying linearly because i explained the linear relationship itself I've explained the linear relationship itself and I'm talking about this, okay, linearly with the number of borders. How? The average expenses of the border is 10,000 when there are 30 borders. In the hostel, if 30 people live, listen, in the hostel, if 30 people live, live each one of them end up paying rupees 10,000. Each one of them end up paying rupees 10,000 instead, call it instead. If there are 60 borders, if 60 of them live in that hostel, hostel building is big enough. If 60 of them live in this particular hostel, they end up paying only 8,000 per person. They end up paying only 8,000 per person. His question is, if there are 120 people staying in that particular hostel, how much each one of them will end up paying? What is the story behind this? The storyline is the storyline is, so what they are paying is something like this. The fixed cost of the hostel will be shared by all of them fixed cost of the hostel will be shared by each one of them and they will pay some variable cost for staying there they will pay some variable cost which will become the total cost this becomes the total cost per person let me explain this if you didn't understand this let me take a simple analogy to explain this because if you can understand this phenomena directly you can solve the questions much faster and better let's assume that okay somebody wants to go from the hostel to airport Somebody wants to go from all its hostel to airport. You hired a air, you hired a, you hired a taxi, Ola, Uber, whatever is available there, right? Be it uh, airport, uh, airport taxi, whatever you hired a taxi. You want to go from hostel to airport. He said that thousand rupees fixed. You got to pay thousand rupees plus. All right, yeah, plus. So you may. He also said that look, I am running. All we are running. All right, we are we, we are running an NGO. Therefore, whoever hires this particular taxi has to pay fifty rupees for NGO. 
50 rupees per person. This is 50 rupees per person. Rupees 50 per person. Whoever sits into this particular taxi has to make a donation of 50 rupees. So, no arguments. That is the rules of that particular taxi. 1000 rupees from hostel to airport. It doesn't matter how many people sit. This is what you got to pay. Assume that only 1% travel. If only 1% travel, this fellow will pay the entire 1000 rupees plus 50 rupees. Therefore, the total cost is going to be 1050. Okay. Yeah. Instead, two people travel. He said that doesn't matter. My taxi can take two people also. But 1000 rupees is fixed. That's fixed charges from hostel to airport. Fine. So what happens? 1000 rupees would be divided by two people. What is your share? I'm talking about your share. So to your share. Your share is that 1000 rupees will get shared between both of you. Plus you end up paying a variable charity of 50 rupees. That charity goes from you. No charity is not shared. Charity you will end up paying. It. So how much you are paying now? 550 rupees. Instead. Four people travel. The taxi can go take up to four people, let us say. Four of you decided to travel. Four of you wanted to go from hostel to airport. Fine. Thousand rupees will be shared between four of you. Equal it. You share between each of each one of you. And then you end up paying 50. Therefore, each one of you end up paying only 300 rupees. Now, this is called as inverse relationship. What is this inverse relationship I am talking about? Right, the amount you are paying, the amount that you are paying, amount per person is fixed charges by n number of people plus variable charges per person. This is what is called as inverse per inverse relationship. Is, did you understand inverse relationship in a direct sense? Is this clear to all of you? Is this inverse relationship clear? Did you understand? My explanation is clear. Did the taxi part came out well? Did it help? Did this taxi thing help you to understand inverse relation? Linear inverse relation is what I explained. Linear inverse relationship is clear. Good. Keval understood. Anuraga understood. Tamanna understood. I am hoping that others also understood. All right. Mohit, Atana, everyone is doing the... Right. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now let's come back and solve this question therefore. Let's come back and solve this question therefore. Quickly, let's solve this. Yeah. So let's come to this. So now what is happening here? So he ended up paying 10,000 rupees when there are 30 people. After reading this question, you will understand that there is a fixed charges for this hostel shared among 30 people because 30 people are living there. And each one of them will pay a variable cost, which is nothing but 10,000. 10,000 per person. Second case, case two, fixed charges are distributed among 60 folks. But each one of them will end up paying their variable cost. That can be food expenses, whatever it is, food and uh, maybe already knows so the blankets, pillow, all of that variable expenses, washroom, all of which variable expenses. Therefore, each one of them ended up paying 8,000 rupees. Now, what do I do? Subtract. Call this as the first equation. Call this as the second equation. Do first equation minus second equation. You will get F divided by 30 because F by 30, F by 30 minus F by 60 is equal to F by 30. Right, F by 30, we understand that very well. F by 30, V and V gets cancelled. So therefore, all right, I'm subtracting the second equation from the first equation, which is equal to 2000. 2000. Therefore, you say that man, F is equal to, F is, sorry, F by 30. This is 30, 60, F by 60. F by 30 minus F by 60 is nothing but F by 60, sorry. Yeah, so therefore, F is equal to 60 times of 2000. Okay, this is the value of F. But I want the value of V also before I answer the full question. Okay, what is the value of V therefore? Substitute this in the second equation. Put the value of F is equal to 60 times of 2000. Put it as 60 times of 2000 there. So therefore 2000 plus V is equal to 8000. Therefore V becomes 6000. Therefore V will be equal to 6000. Now come back and do this particular question here. Plug the value of F. What is the value of F? Value of F is equal to 6 into 2000. How many people are boarding now? 120 people are in the hostel plus what is the variable charges 6000 rupees variable charges is 6000 rupees fair enough simplify this 61 time 62 time therefore two 1000 times 6000 plus 1000 they end up paying 7000 each that is the answer to this particular question if 120 people are there how much they end up paying they end up paying 7000 per head i hope this question should be crystal clear to everybody we are good to go to the next one Give me a quick thumbs up or confirmation that we are good to go to the next one. Inverse relationship is clear. But you need to identify such questions in the future. That's a point. If you identify it faster, you can solve faster. It's all about identifying the question type. Linear inverse relationship is very, very fashionable in CAT. 
this is a linear inverse relationship what we did now is the linear inverse relationship very good very good last one last one direct linear relationship direct relationship what would we say in the direct relationship in the direct relationship a will be of the form k times of b plus m this is the linear direct relationship linear direct relationship let's quickly take this last type this is the type 5 then we'll go to the applications once we are done with the type 5 then we will switch ourselves to the application portion of it the salesman in a company gets an incentive for every unit of product he sells apart from his fixed salary he gets rupees 550000 and 52000 for selling 200 units and 250 units okay if he sells 400 units what is the income per unit what is the income per unit very simple so i will put it in the direct relationship here so what is this firstly he is selling 200 units for which total amount he is receiving is this much therefore you say that 200 times of k here this is 200 200 times of k 200 times of k plus he will get a fixed salary this m is nothing but a fixed salary which is equal to the value of a i am writing what is the value of a he is getting 50,000 rupees he is getting. He is getting 50,000 rupees. I just substituted the values. Fair enough. Second case, 250 units he is selling. Therefore, he gets 250k as the incentive. He gets his fixed salary, which would become 52,000. There is the first equation. There is a second equation. Okay. If I resolve them, fixed salary remains same. Okay. Listen to this. What is the question required? Fixed ones are pretty, pretty simple. Okay. What is the question required here? F plus 400 times of k is equal to how much right that is the first thing that i need to find out after this i have to divide this particular how much by 400 this how much i need to divide by 400 nevertheless first let's find out what is f plus 400 simple how do i find out f plus 400 i can find from here i already know f plus 250k i already know the value of f plus 250k how much is this 52000 to this i need to add another 150k I need to add another 150k which will become f plus 400k how do i find this simply subtract the first equation from the second equation simply subtract the first equation from the second equation you will get it what you get you get 50k is equal to 2000 if 50k is equal to 2000 what will be the value of 150k 150k is nothing but 6000 150k is nothing but 6000 add 6000 to this if you add 6000 to this all right you are getting the value of 58000 this value is 58,000. Answer is not 58,000. You got the you got the value of 58,000. What is the answer per unit? How much did he earn per unit? So 58,000 divided by 400 is what I'm supposed to solve. 580 divided by 4 is what I should do. One year, then six year, then five year. He is getting 165 rupees per unit. I hope all of you all of you it made some sense clear to you. Made some sense, everyone direct relationship i found the direct relationship but i don't have to find what is k i don't have to find what is f i can do the questions directly which means it be just because you wrote the variable doesn't mean that you should get the value of variable that's my point all right this is the kind of a question what kevala some time back to be focused on the variable not necessarily it depends on the pattern of the question in this question i neither found the value of k nor found the value of f but i still found out the answer not required that i have to find the values of variables it depends on the formation of question making sense making sense all five types are clear we talked with the direct relation we, we talked with direct variation inverse variation joint variation right inverse variation joint variation then we talked about direct relation then we talked about inverse relation inverse relation then direct relation clearly your problems in cat or any exam however critical they are they belong to one of these five types that is what i have observed right from 1992 onwards cat papers are there till 2000 okay in between from 2009 to 2015 it was not there otherwise if you look through the questions you can classify these into these five types it should fall under one of these five types great now let's go to the applications now so we are done with the basic part let's go to the application part okay let's before going to the application part quick announcements about tomorrow's lecture that we are doing i'll be doing three uh, lectures tomorrow one at 2 p.m that's dilr classics we continue i'm hoping that already you are finding the value addition in DLR, dilr classics i'm not sure because i'm finding less thumbs ups there i'm not sure how many of you are actually targeting between 95 to 100 percentile in cat because if you are targeting somewhere between this i think the classic should make sense the lesser participation there etc i'm not sure 
uh, what exactly is your ambitions because I don't see your profiles. I don't get to understand you a lot better. So therefore, what is your ambitions? I don't know, right? So based on your ambitions, if the ambition is to get somewhere upward of 95 to 100 percentile, the classic should make sense, right? Yeah, along with this, this is the burning question people get. So that's 5.30, I'm addressing this. That is how to plan mock other management entrance exams like SNAP and NMAT mocks, right? So when, uh, without affecting your CAT preparation, because a lot of people, they start preparing for NMAT and they start messing up with CAT. They start preparing for SNAP, especially NMAT, because NMAT sometimes comes that the exam dates they take before CAT and they kind of mess it up out there. They kind of mess it up out there. So therefore, how you don't mess it up, how do you kind of plan it? I will just give a small pep talk about that. I will give up, share the planning part of it. You can come there at 5.30 and we can do that particular lesson. Tomorrow, I'll be doing one more arithmetic topic that is time and work. Then probably we'll get onto the geometry, algebras, etc., etc. Some impactful topics. We'll be left with about 90 days and we will move on there. So probably time and work we will finish by this particular weekend. Some impactful concepts from time and work we will finish out there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. So when you are joining in there, all right, you can always use this particular code. Uh, yes, on the 1st of September onwards, 1st of, sorry, this is the 1st of September onwards. 1st of September, I will be starting the special classes, three special classes on the Unacademy app. Try and be there as much as you could. Make some time and be there. We will try and do a lot of interactive lectures on the Unacademy app where the lecture notes will be made available to you. Right? That's one additional advantage that you have. And if you are liking the way we are doing the lecture, not right now, maybe at the end of it, you can always like and share that with some other people. And if you have not downloaded the app, download the app while you are doing this. Use the code will be 100. Yeah. So liking part, if you like it, all right, now always be ready to put that as you like that particular class, right? So yeah, all right. Let's go to the application side. Let's go to the application side of it. Let's go to the application side of it. Yeah, let's start with the cat question. Let's start with one of the simple cat questions on the application side. Okay. I will time it maybe for about a minute or two. So why don't you try this? Try this application, simple one, because there cannot be complexity here. Go ahead, try this. Okay, well, we can discuss that towards the end. You said that DILR lessons are needed so that we will discuss towards the end, at the end of the lecture. What is that requirement that you have? If that fits the bill, we can do it. Okay, the comprehension might take some time. Yes, no doubt about it. The comprehension might take some time out here. Yeah, nevertheless, let's quickly take a look at this. Let's take a look at this. Good. Yeah, let's take a look at this. The speed of the railway engine is 42 kilometers when no compartment is attached, right? Yeah. And the reduction in speed of the engine is directly proportional to the square root of the number of compartments attached. If the speed of the train carried by this engine is 24 kilometers per hour when nine compartments are attached 
the maximum number of compartments that can be carried by this particular engine is how much okay let me explain like this the running speed let me call it as fr all right or let me call it as the actual speed all right actual speed actual speed what what we understand is the actual speed is nothing but the maximum speed that is sm maximum speed minus reduction in speed that is the actual running speed if you want to understand that is what author tried to say so look at this how he is starting this particular sentence here the reduction in speed of the engine is directly proportional to square root of the number of compartments attached he is explaining this reduction in speed is directly proportional to square root of the number of compartments attached square root of n number of compartments attached it's nothing but yes r is equal to k times of n this is what he tried to say it reduces reduces from where it reduces from 42 kilometers per hour it reduces from where you may say that okay you are saying that it is reducing reducing from what it is reducing from the maximum speed the engine is designed for engine is designed for 42 doesn't mean that beat uphill or downhill every time it runs with 42 no so what he meant is okay if the engine is designed for 42 the more compartments more bogies you attach to it more weight you attach to it naturally the speed keeps cutting down so that is what he meant so therefore actual running speed actual running speed is nothing but the maximum speed minus reduction in speed fair enough we know some values here therefore what is the what is the maximum speed the maximum speed is 42 maximum speed is 42 what is the actual running speed all it has running speed here i substitute this here i bring this substitute k times of under root of n which becomes how much actual speed i'm just shifting this on the other side as an equation i'm shifting it on the other side this is what was given to me after reading this question you understand that okay this is what has been said to me this is what has been said there fair enough if this is what has been said now what is given to me so he said that engine started running at 24 this value is given engine started it running at 24 when when you attach nine compartments when you went on to attach nine compartments therefore k times of under root of 9 42 is given to me this is the statement 24 24 is the running speed so when nine compartments get attached to this fair enough this is what you are trying to say therefore 42 minus 3k is equal to 24 42 minus uh, my, um, 40 sorry hang on hang on hang on if the speed of the train carried by this engine is 24 yeah correct all right 34 42 minus 3k is equal to 24 from here let's get the value of this therefore 3k is equal to 42 minus 3k is equal to 42 minus 24 all right which is nothing but 18 therefore k is equal to 6 fair enough we got the value of k is equal to 6 now look what author is trying to say tell me how many bogies at the maximum that you can attach so that the engine still keeps running fair enough let's come back to this let's substitute in this 42 minus the value of k i know now i will substitute for k hey, what is the value of k 6 42 minus 6 i'm putting in that formula 6 times of under root of how many compartments i will find out should the running speed should be how much the running speed should be greater than running speed all it does the actual speed this should be greater than zero it should be still running my friend engine should not come to the stand still it should be greater than which means this is the running speed is equal to actual speed actual speed now what is that actual speed should be greater than zero all right actual speed should be greater than zero what is the meaning of actual speed this part this part should be greater than zero otherwise the engine will not run engine will not move any further fair enough let's understand this therefore 42 minus 42 42 should be greater than under root of 6 10 i'm just taking it to the other side under root of 6 10 6 1 time 6 7 time therefore you say that square it on both the sides 49 is greater than n all right which means n should be in other words n should be less than 49 n is less than 49 means what n should be equal to 48 minimum value of n should be 48 maximum value of n should be 48 right therefore mean maximum of 48 bogies can be attached till the engine keeps running okay did the explanation make sense to you is this clear writing this statement was important once you write this particular statement converting this to this was important this is what author tried to say this comprehension is important there make sense here clear everybody clear did this make sense what i said one of the beautiful questions one of the beautiful questions did it make sense second equation is what plug the values plug the values second equation is this put 42 here it's given now this is sm maximum speed given maximum speed given all right this is sr right this is sr here 
right sr is given that's given all right now this reduction in speed see understand practically reduction in speed actual speed is nothing but maximum speed minus reduction in speed that is how you get actual speed is nothing but maximum speed minus reduction in speed right that is how you get the actual speed more the weight you put see how the runners run right how the how technically right so how the people the people those who sprint how do they practice they keep the weights they keep the tires to their all right now they add some weights to their legs or sometimes to their uh to, all right, to uh, they add it to their waist around the waist they will add the weights and then they will run why because without those weights they can run faster with those weights naturally their efficiency will be left something like that actual actual speed is a function of what is the maximum speed the engine designed for and the reduction of speed so that is what author is trying to tell you it reduction reduction in speed reduction from where reduction from maximum clear made sense yep good good all right it's a very typical name somebody is joined as f of brown very typical name all right all right okay okay let's not one go well let's go one notch a little below here let's try this now let's try this now please read this all of you try this all of you try this try this within one one and a half minutes it shouldn't take much time honestly it shouldn't take much time try it out quickly try it out Okay, I will add 30 more seconds. Finish it, finish it. I'm counting. Fifteen more seconds. What happened guys why you guys slowed down it's time almost i gave 90 seconds to do this problem okay what does it say the ambient temperature is actually actually between i think it is between 66 to 72 degree fahrenheit converted to degree celsius it will be 25 that's ambient temperature all the global ambient temperature nevertheless okay that's a fact that's a fact 25 degrees centigrade is a fact for the ambient temperature so what does it say the heat generated by a certain body we don't know which is this body the heat generated by a certain body per unit time so which is that unit time he chose per second that unit time he took second second minute whatever they want they can they can take it all right per second that's what he's taking for fair enough right yeah that's fine cable that's fine yeah per second the unit time first he said that per unit time he said per unit time that per unit time has become per second that has become per second there so let's put that to perspective let's understand this the heat radiated therefore heat let me write it as h heat radiated by a certain body per unit time varies well, it varies directly with the square root of excess excess means something minus something x minus y something minus something the word is excess inside the square root there is an excess excess of the temperature of the body over the ambient temperature therefore t minus 25 how do you know 25 excess from where excess of the temperature of the body over the ambient temperature over and above ambient temperature if it is the ambient temperature it will not produce any heat beyond the ambient temperature it will start producing heat all right that body will start producing some heat so ambient temperature we already read it is 25 therefore i substituted this is what it is in the sense author is trying to say h is equal to k times of under root of t minus 25 that is the point he said by saying that square root square root therefore i put the square root 
and then excess inside that there is an excess excess means something minus something so excess from where excess from the ambient temperature ambient temperature was how much 25 put that to perspective you will get this particular equation and we are sorted once you get this we are done so what did he say therefore let's go to the questions right the heat radiated here so let's go to the information the heat radiated per second is 15 joules heat is equal to 15 joules when the temperature is 34 degree that is k times of 34 minus 25 that's nothing but 3k is equal to this therefore k is equal to 5 you get the value of k is equal to 5 fair enough from here he's saying that uh, what is the heat radiated when the uh, when the uh, when the heat radiated is 30 joules per second what do you want temperature find the temperature when the heat radiated is this much go here heat we know heat is equal to 30 k value is 5 under root of t minus 25 you got to find the value of t from here Fair enough, this is 5 one time, 5 6 times, square on both the sides, 36 is equal to t minus 25, therefore t is equal to 61. See, it's just about the comprehension. How soon you write is what you need to practice from the language skills and from your experience. You have to soon, if you write this, calculation hardly takes any time. Hey, writing all this takes how much time? Hardly few seconds, few seconds. But what might take time quickly after reading, how long we take to write this might take some time there. Okay, is this making sense? Is this making sense? This is clear. Did this make sense? What we discussed now, did this make sense to everyone? Okay, Afofra says got it. Cable says got it. Okay. 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 How many of you want to do the level 3 question? How many of you want to do one level 3 question on this concept? How many of you? If you really want to do a level 3 question, I will not explain that two times, only one time. If you are not ready, I have to finish something else before I do that. But would you like to do it now? Level 3, is 11 o'clock the good time? Or at 11 o'clock will you lose comprehension? If you lose comprehension at 11, we will do some other time. How many of you think you should do one level 3 question? Okay, Prashant wants to do, Anurag wants to do, Keval wants to do. Athena wants to do. Sartak is also ready. Very good. So if you are ready for the battle, let's do it. Let's do it. If you are ready for the battle, why not? Why not? Yeah, box type question. Tell me how much rupees I should read this question. Okay, I will time it now. Keval, you are asking more time. Okay, from now you take two minutes. Already one minute is over. Take two more minutes from now. Sure, fight it out. You want to fight it out, fight it out. After this, we can go and sleep.
Okay, guys, let's do this. It is about three minutes I gave in total. All right, let's do this together. Let's do this together. Let's try this. The consumption of petrol per hour of a car varies directly. First of all, let's talk about the consumption. Consumption of petrol varies directly as the square of its speed. Consumption varies directly with the square of its speed. Consumption varies directly with the square of its speed. All right, square of its speed. That's what he said. Consumption what? Per hour. Remember this. We are making a study per hour. Consumption per hour varies directly as the square of its speed. When the car is traveling at 40 kilometers per hour, car is traveling at 40 kilometers per hour, its consumption is 1 liter per hour. When the car is traveling at 40 kilometers per hour, listen to this very carefully. When the car is traveling at 40 kilometers per hour, Okay, from here, C is equal to K times of S square. That is what I can write. Okay, when the car is traveling at 40 kilometers per hour, that is 40 square. 40 square. The consumption is 1 liter per hour. So, therefore, I get the value of K from here. K is equal to 1 divided by 40 square. This is the first part. Okay, fair enough. So, we kind of got the K from there. Now, but the point is, okay, this story is done. Next is what? If each liter cost rupees 40, I think this should have been done long time back. Okay, yeah. So now it is almost about 100 plus, right? Okay. If each liter cost 40 and other expenses per hour cost 40, there are two types of cost involved here. But okay. So what is that? If each liter cost 40 and other expenses cost other expenses per hour is equal to 40, then what would be the minimum expenditure required to cover the distance of 400 kilometer? Two things. What is the fuel cost? Total cost is made up of two things. One is the fuel cost. One is the fuel cost. The second one is the other expenses. He is calling it as the other expenses. Two things. One is the fuel cost. The second one is the other expenses. Both put together, it becomes the total cost. Both put together, it becomes the total cost. What about the other expenses? Other expenses are rupees 40 per hour. Simple. So therefore, this is 40 into T. 40 into T, assuming that it is it is traveling for T hours, every hour it requires 40 rupees. Every hour other expenses involve 40 rupees. I don't know what are the other expenses here. Maybe all it now, so may all it may be other maintenance expenditure that is 40 per hour into T hours. Very clear. Okay, because it requires T hours. Hey, what about the fuel cost? Let's find out. What about the fuel cost? Let's find out. Fuel cost is nothing but fuel cost. Again, so this, all it now, look at this consumption per hour. What was this C which was given to us? C is nothing but the consumption per hour. It is the consumption per hour. Fuel cost is therefore nothing but understand the fuel cost. Let me explain this fuel cost carefully because this is where people falter. Fuel cost is nothing but consumption per hour. The value of C is what? Consumption per hour into T hours. Consumption per hour. All right, now I will understand what is the consumption per hour. What is the T here? What is the unit of C? Be very careful. This is the consumption per hour consumption per hour into if that is what it is consuming per hour into 40 rupees that is the cost into t hours this is the consumption per hour into t hours that becomes the total consumption because c is the consumption per hour understand this very carefully the unit of c is per hour it is given per hour it is the consumption per hour not full travel consumption per hour into t hours gives the total consumption for each consumption how much i should pay i should pay 40 rupees for that consumption whatever the amount of petrol got consumed i have to pay 40 rupees for this fair enough hey what is the value of c here the value of c is nothing but k times of s square here it is the value of c is nothing but k times of s square let me substitute k times of s square all right k times of s square into t into 40 this is what i should be doing fair enough okay, what is the value of k that also i know 1 by 40 square therefore s square divided by 40 square into t into 40 this is the fuel cost this is the fuel cost okay how on earth i am going to get t because there is a t here and here also there is a t there is a t here but how on earth i am going to get this particular t fair enough t is nothing but distance by speed what is the distance this person wants us to cover 400 kilometer what is the ideal speed that should be maintained so that i can travel this distance in minimum expenditure by spending minimum i will be able to travel this fine okay, what is the definition of time definition of time is nothing but distance 400 kilometers divided by speed divided by speed let me substitute it here now first let me copy the fuel cost here let me copy the fuel cost s yes, square divided by 40 square i'm copying this call it into 40 into t 
I am writing this T here into T, 40 into 40 into T. Let, let me now substitute the value of T, 400 divided by S. S square divided by 40 square into 40 into 400 divided by S plus this is nothing but 40 into T value is nothing but 400 divided by S. What did I do? I substituted for the value of T. I substituted for the value of T. Fair enough. Let me simplify this. Wherever it is possible, let me simplify this here. Okay, I will cancel this. I will cancel this S with this particular S and I will keep this common. I will keep this element common. I will write it. I will write it as 40 into 400 times of 40 into 400 times of S divided by 40 square. Yes, divided by 40 square plus 1 by s. This is what it has become. What did I do? This whole thing I have cut short. I have out of this, I made this as a common parameter. 40 by 400, 40 into 400 is here. 40 into 400 is here also. I took that constant outside because you can't minimize that constant. Therefore, I need to minimize this because this is the total expenditure. This is the total expenditure. This is the total expenditure total expenditure to minimize i can't minimize 4 into 400 i need to minimize this particular bracket now to minimize this bracket you need to know the concept of am greater than or equal to gm am gm you should know okay which are the two terms now i will not explain this am gm i will explain this in some other class altogether that is the concept which is required there am gm is the concept which gets involved into this okay, what is am gm let us say my first term is s by 40 square if there are two terms if there are two terms, S by 40 square is the first term. This is the term 1. The second term is 1 by S. Second term is 1 by S. If the GM, if the sum, all that product is constant. Now look at this GM. That is product is constant. S divided by 40 square into 1 by S. Look at these two terms, T1 into T2. Product is constant. What is product? Product is nothing but 1 divided by 40 square. If the product is constant, listen, this you would have learned done from the high school. Let me explain at least from the high school perspective. If the product is constant, if the product is constant, this you would have learned from the high school. Forget the AMGM for the time being. At least you would know this. If the product is constant, then sum is minimum. If sum is minimum, when A is equal to B. In other words, if A into B is equal to constant, given A into B is equal to constant, then A plus B is minimum. Then A plus B is minimum when A is equal to B. This you study in the ninth standard. This you study in the ninth standard, right? Okay, let me explain this just in case you want to understand this. Take A into B is equal to 16. Take A into B is equal to 16. Any positive real number I am talking about. Okay, what is the minimum value of A plus B? Minimum value of A plus B will come when you make this as 4 into 4 is equal to 16. Then you will write 4 plus 4 which becomes 8. This is the minimum. Nobody can get less than this for two positive real numbers A and B. You may say that, no sir, I will write this as 8 into 2. All right, 8 into 2, 16. Fair enough. Then add them, 8 plus 2 becomes 10. You may say that, no sir, I will write this as 16 into 1 is equal to 16. Then you will write this as 16 plus 1 which becomes 17. Minimize when they are equal. Fair enough. So therefore, we understood there are two terms. My first term was S divided by 40 square. My second term was 1 by S. Right? The, I understand that the product of these two terms is constant. Look at this. If you take the multiplication, product of these two terms becomes constant. That is 1 divided by 40 square. If the product is constant, the sum I want it to be minimum. Sum is minimum when these two are equal. What do you mean by that? First term should be equal to second term. Sum is minimum when A is equal to B. What is my A? This is my A. What is my B? The second term. You equate them. Therefore, S square is equal to 40 square. Take the positive value for the speed. Therefore, S is equal to 40. Therefore, S is equal to 40. Fair enough. Apply it. Therefore, S is equal to 40 and substitute it here. Let us write the answer back here. 4 into 400 times of 4 into 400 times of 40 divided by 40 square plus 1 divided by 40. 40 because you got the value of S is equal to 40. Substitute this. Right. Therefore, you say that 40 into 400 times of 2 divided by 40. All right. 2 dollar right, you get this. All right. Because 40, 40 cancel. 2 divided by 40. Fair enough. This 40 and this 40 is cancel. Therefore, 800, 400 into 2. You will end up paying 800 rupees. This is one of the beautiful questions based on this concept that we were doing it today 800 is the amount all right you will end up paying a minimum of 800 rupees beautiful concept all right this is the level three question when we talk about the level three question this is the depth it gets into now you may think that sir you explained it for so long almost for about 10 minutes yeah correct explanation takes time 
But when you think so much, would you write all this story to explain this to me? Am greater than gm or sum is constant, product is, all right, when the sum is constant, product is maxima, all right, when product is constant, sum is minima. No, you will not explain all this. It's already in the back of your mind. The moment you look at this particular question, minima, when the maxima minima is coming, you know that there exists a constant. Either sum is going to be constant or product is going to be constant. That is when you get into the concept of maxima minima. This is how the maxima minima gets squeezed into our direct or inverse relationships i hope this question summarizes our complete discussion at the level three okay it is making sense kind of did it make sense this portion of it please go back and listen once again if you want this portion go back and listen this is at the level three if you ask that which are the questions at the level three this is the one of the questions i did at the level three i generally don't do at this stage the level three but nevertheless today we did one question on level three made sense Made sense. Some sense did it make. Some sense did it make. Yeah. Okay. 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 Right. Therefore, you need to be okay with basics of everything to answer level three questions of one area because under root is under undercurrent is concepts gets connected. At the end of the day, all the concepts gets connected. You may say that okay, this question is on the variation. You may look at this question and you say that this is on variation. But the point is, if you don't have the understanding of maxima minima, if you don't have the understanding of maxima minima, how you would have done this variation? You can't do this variation. Therefore, the basics of everything you should know, basics of arithmetic you should know, basics of algebra you should know, basics of geometry you should know, all basics you should know. Depth you can hit only some area. There is a difference between going wider and going deeper. Wider, you should know all the topics in quant. Deeper is your choice. I'm good in algebra, go deeper. I'm good in arithmetic, go deeper. I'm good in geometry, go deeper. Not so good, leave it there, right? So that's how that's how you kind of go there. Like two important topics, of course, just to put it to perspective, arithmetic and geometry are the two most important topics. Topics first spend time. If you when you go in deeper, first go wider. All the topics you finish, geometry, uh, you can finish algebra, finish modern maths, all of it you finish. That's go wider. Once you go wider, when you want to go deeper, first go deep with arithmetic then go deep with geometry then you decide wherever you want to go right so first depth has to come from arithmetic and geometry if you are serious about your cat prep and then comes your numbers your modern maths your algebra all of this comes later these are the two important boulders to be covered when you are going into the depth of it okay fair enough i will close my inputs here so if you guys liked it all right now before leaving all right like this share it and then all right you can leave uh, I will do quick announcements. Meanwhile, if anybody wants to put in some comments out there, in the sense you want to convey something to me, so you can put it there. Meanwhile, yeah. So just yesterday, some of the new batches have been launched. That's on 25th of August. Some new batches have been launched. Uh, one for CAT 21. There are CAT 22. Other management entrance exams like NMAT, SNAP, etc. And also MHCT 21. Okay. And some of the finest educators who are taking these courses. You can check out on these particular courses. So if you are in need, if you are in test course, etc., etc., if you are in need, you want to go for CAT Iconic, that is one-to-one -one interaction. You want to go for one-to-one -one interactions, you can use the CAT Iconic. You can use this Iconic facility. So subscribe while subscribing, you can use the code BELVI100. So if you are not subscribed to the channel yet or you didn't have taken the subscription, you can use the BELVI100. That would be win-win situation for both of us. Limited edition offer is going on in this particular month. If you buy, if you are looking especially at CAT 22 or 23 program. So if you want 12 months subscription, you get 3 months free. Adds up to 15 months. 24 months, you get 3 months free. That's a limited edition offer on now. So if you guys, anybody is in the college yet and if you, 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 you can enroll, you can enroll now as a campus ambassador. So of course, all right, because you enroll, you will also get, of course, as you enroll, you will understand what is your role there. Uh, so already you also get certificate from an academy which can be leveraged at the later stage during your interviews or other things. You also get some Amazon goodies, some the gadgets, and you also get some incentive, all right, some incentive, maybe the cash incentive or whichever way it is, right? Yeah. So if you have not yet attempted the test CAT, CAT combat, that is CAT test, the mock test, this one hour test. So this could be the right time because 250 participants will be uh, picked by lucky draw, not based on your performance. It is simply based on lucky draw. Just you have to participate for this one hour of mock test of CAT. That happens on 29th Sunday at 12 p.m. So naturally, or you can expect a lot of goodies, all smart watches, or it can be iPad, it can be the speakers, gift vouchers, many more, many more. So there we go. So that's that's that brings to the end of this particular lecture.
I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you tomorrow at 2 p.m. If you are seriously preparing for uh, 95 to 100 percentile kind of a range, attend these DILR lectures. Yeah, any comments here you can put there or if you are listening to this lecture after, after the live goes off, then probably you can also put them in the comments. All right, you can also use the comments if not the live chat. Yeah, there we go. All right, good night from my end. I will see you tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. Bye till then. Stay blessed. Keep doing the hard work. Sleep well. Take sufficient rest. All right. All right, guys. Bye-bye.